This video is going to show how to replace this Wellmate WN6 pressure tank. My water pressure seemed to be varying a lot, and especially when I flush a toilet, it almost would just kind of turn all the way off and kind of like pulse on and off a bit. If I go over to my well switch, it seems like it's going up past 75 PSI, even though I have it set to 60. Just seems like it's filling up too fast. So I decided I would check my pressure on this, which I think is supposed to be like two PSI under the lower limit, which is 40 PSI. So I went to do that and yeah, I don't think water's supposed to come out of the air valve. So here you can see I have a shower on and oh no, it completely turned off. I think when the pressure tank is causing the pump to cycle so fast, it overheats and just needs to take a little break. Because um, it usually comes back and works after I turn off the power to it for a little bit. The pump's probably 24 years old, so I think all of this stuff is due to die. Maybe I can get a little bit more life out of it. So I bought it from Aqua Science for $315 shipped. It's actually, uh, it's not too heavy. I think because it's made out of fiberglass. Warranty stuff. So here's what I got. Precharged to 40 PSI. And then this is the, I think, drawdown gallons. If you've got your system running between 20 and 40 PSI, you get seven gallons out of this. Even though this is a, I guess a 20 gallon tank, um, part of that is filled up with the air bladder. So water comes in and it pushes on the air bladder and then it uh, goes down when you use the water at your faucet. So if you have a higher pressure, it's going to uh, squeeze that air more. And I think overall, you're not gonna have as much capacity for how much water actually goes in and out as it's being cycled in pressure because you're squeezing a lot of that air out. The instructions are pretty short, which is nice. It says it comes pre-charged. Um, it comes with a little bit of lubrication grease for the O-rings, which is nice because I've read that you're not supposed to use just uh, petroleum jelly or Vaseline on those. Um, basically just a few parts. And then um, it also says you're supposed to have a pressure relief valve. And then it says you should set it up for four PSI below the turn on point or the low pressure point of your system. And if you have f high flow or high system pressures or elevated water or air temperatures, increase it to 10 PSI below the low pressure limit. So by increase, I think they mean decrease it. That's about it. And you can put it uh, underground too, if you want. You just have to make sure it's above the water table and below the frost line. And it really is pretty light. Okay, first thing is to drain and take off my other tank. And before I do that, I need to turn the power off to my pump so my basement doesn't flood. Water pump off. And then I have this handy cutoff valve that disconnects the rest of my house so I don't have to drain all the plumbing in my house. So I'll turn that off. Now I can just drain out of this little hose here. So there's the problem without having a functioning tank is that I only got about, I don't know, a tenth of a gallon before the pump would have to turn on again. The instructions say I'm supposed to depressurize uh, this system, the whole system too. I don't really understand why that would be, but, and it should be any pressure in there anyway. So I'm gonna use this little, the nub on the back of this thing to see if there's any pressure left. Oh, so there's some air in there. How much? Nope, oh, nothing. It's not measuring any pressure, but I still hear air leaking out of it. After about a minute of holding it on there. 
Okay, I can't turn this T because it's just a solid piece of metal. Uh, so I'm hoping I can just rotate that. And if it's like the new design, this piece that will eventually connect to my plumbing has this kind of just O-ring part that you could twist freely. So hopefully I can just undo this. Okay, this has got 24 years on it, so this might take some motivation. I mean, I can see it rotating a little, but it's not like something's holding it from this end. Let's look inside here. Yeah, that doesn't look like it's something that can rotate freely. No idea how this was installed, except that maybe this was they put the T on this before they plumbed in the rest of the stuff. I'm going to use this different type of wrench. There comes the water. Oh, there's some gallons in there. Shove this in here. Now I should be able to just pull the whole thing out. Still has a lot of water in it. I might have to let it drain out completely just so I can lift it. Not the best idea. Just manually holding a hose to the end, pretending that that's actually capturing stuff. Some of it's going in, yes. This is gonna take a while. If I could put like let air in the top or something to speed it up. So letting air in the top actually does speed it up quite a bit. So what I should have done is let the air out while I had the hose open earlier. So you should do this before you take a hacksaw to the pipe. Yeah, this is a solid 20 gallons coming out of here, maybe more of iron laden water that's going to be horrible to clean up. Make sure you drain it first. Okay. Now that the water is actually drained, this is quite a bit lighter. Should have moved these cords before I started this. Okay. Now I can actually loosen this part. There we go. A little bit of iron in this system. And there's a little bit of uh, the old um, Teflon tape on the inside of this. So take that out. So I wonder if this little part is my um, pressure relief valve. And kind of looks like it might have some springs in there. That kind of looks like a pressure relief. Okay, the next step is to attach this guy to my T. And the instructions didn't say to put any Teflon tape on here. I'm not going to put it on because this is plastic going in the metal. Um, yell at me in the comments if that's a bad decision. Push that up on something. Right next it says to lubricate the o-ring with the lube packet provided and press the tank drain onto the plastic connector. So here is the lube packet silicone lubricant. I should probably like take this o-ring off to lube this, but I think the idea with this grease is that it'll keep your o-ring from drying out over time, so maybe I should actually try to do that. Okay, there's my o-ring. Okay, now I have to put the new tank in there and then slide it forward onto that o-ring. Rather, I have to slide that part onto my O-ring, which is going to be a little tricky. It's actually made out of metal, there's no way I can do this. Okay, here's my new attachment piece to the T. Slide this guy around. Luckily my plumbing is pretty loose. So I'm going to try and get this in a good spot because once this fills with water it's not moving. 
guess this has to be rotated a little bit. That's what's here. All right. Okay. Each clip that has to go on here to hold it all in place. Is that it? Well, that seemed pretty easy. Okay, they say it's pre-charged to 40 PSI and I want this to be four PSI less than my turn on point or low pressure point, which is 40 PSI. So I think this should be, should like let out air until it's 36 PSI. So 40 around the button. I have no idea if this tire gauge is at all accurate. So I'm gonna let out a little bit of air. Still, I think around 39 maybe. My old tank was at 40 PSI before it was broken and it ran for 24 years. But maybe it's just, if it's not the optimal 4 PSI below, then your pump cycles more than it should or something like that. Uh, 32, 4, 6, a little over 36. Okay, good enough. Okay, we are all plumbed up. This is off. I still have my house um, connection closed. So I'm about to turn on the pump and see if this leaks or explodes or anything. That made a weird sound. Well, it went up to uh, 50 PSI right away. Going to 60, and then it should turn off. Okay, initial appearances are that things are working. I don't feel any water coming out of the connections here. That guy looks like it's sitting on the ground, which hopefully is okay, but yeah, I don't see any leaks. Okay, let's turn on our house line and see what that does. Oh, wow, wonderful. All the water that was needed for the house just came from the tank and the pump didn't turn on again. Okay, now I'm gonna go turn on some faucets and see what that does. bathtub is on and I flush the toilet and the water pressure seemed to stay consistent even while the toilet was flushing again and I can see my pressure slowly dropping to 40 broken pressure tank for so long and I didn't realize it. So I'll look back at the time codes on the video to see how long this is taking, but it used to just turn on every at least 10 seconds or something. And now I've got my full, uh, five or six gallons of drawdown before the pump needs to turn on again. So overall this installation, I don't know, this could have taken less than 20 minutes if I hadn't messed up on draining the previous tank, but super easy because it's very lightweight fiberglass. Um, the only thing you have to configure is the pressure at the top and I think it'll probably work fine even if you don't do that. And uh, yeah. That's it. Hope this helps somebody else avoid what I am going to have to clean up.